first three levels form what is known as the Blue Lodge degrees, and this number three is repeated throughout. Okay, and it's a, a held as a sacred number in all forms of mysticism and occultism. So we see that the largest or, or the very base is the first level. Then it gets smaller as you go up until you come up to the very top, which has a small level at the very top. And I want to point out two things to people. Not only is this a phallic symbol, okay, it's the shape of a penis in general, all right, and we'll see that repeated throughout this uh, presentation here today on what on earth is happening. But we see it lit up again, okay, which they actually added, I believe, in the last 15 years or so, the lighting. And they call this light show that they do each night at the Eiffel Tower Illumination. That is the name of the light show that they do at the Eiffel Tower on a nightly basis. Now, what I want to point out here is simply look at the lighting structure and the way that the, the rigging of the Eiffel Tower looks when lit up this way, and you can clearly see that this is meant to look like a serpent. Okay, This is meant to look like a snake. You can even see the two lights that are there ostensibly so that planes won't run into the Eiffel Tower actually form eyes on this structure, and you see the scales of the snake. Now, some people can argue that that's accidental, and I will say that nothing is accidental when it comes to the occultists that are in control of the world. They love their symbolism. They love telling you who's running the show. They love putting their symbols in plain sight so that you think it's just the everyday and the mundane when, in fact, they're continuously letting you know who owns you. But again, there will be people who will just dismiss things like that and everything else that is said here and feel free to do that because ultimately it's you who isn't free. You know, I'm, I'm free of their mind control. I understand exactly what they're doing and how they do it. I just happen to be embedded in a world where my physical freedoms are limited by other people who are still under their mind control which is why I try to liberate minds, because I don't want my freedom just in mind. I, I will always have my freedom in spirit. I have my freedom in mind, and I want my freedom in body as well. Not good enough to just have two of the three. People who really understand what freedom is want it all. No compromise. So, let's move on to image number six. Image number six shows... Again, the principles of the, the masculine and the feminine in conjunction with each other, first through the obelisk or the phallic symbol, and then through the dome representative of the feminine breast. Okay, so we see here symbolism from Washington, D.C. We have the Washington Monument, another phallic symbol, 555 feet above ground, 111 feet below ground for a total of 666 feet. Uh, there's that number again, okay? And putting 111 below ground is like putting 777 below ground. We talked about the significance of this occult numerology in the last few shows. 111 and 777 are interchangeable. It repre 777 represents completion in thought, emotion, and action. True illumination in the physical world. Okay? Being like the, the creator, being like the divine, imbuing the, the, the spark, the sacred spark of the divine within oneself, being in the world but not of it. Okay? So that number is actually being buried here underneath a male dominator symbol shaped like a penis. Okay, and it's in conjunction, used in conjunction with the feminine shape that is above the Capitol building, the dome of the Capitol building of Congress. Congress, a word meaning union. Okay, coming together. Once again, you see how light plays with this. You see how the, the Capitol building is lit or illuminated. And then we'll see another theme here used by the occultists. And that's reflecting pools, representing once again this principle of as above, so below, or the correspondence principle. Okay? Representing that the physical reality that we live in is merely a reflection 
of the mental and spiritual realms. Okay? The concept of how do we create our reality? They know this very well. But the ignorant public is completely unaware of how their reality is created and how they're the actual generators of their reality through their thoughts, emotions, and actions. And I don't mean just one person. I'm talking about in a collective sense because this is another bunch of new age propaganda that one person is creating the reality that they witness in front of them. Nothing could be further from the truth. It's a quantum effect, folks. It requires an amount put together. The collective thought, emotion, and action of the people create the reality that we all share. We'll get deeper into this occult architecture when we come back. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to What on Earth is Happening. We'll be right back, folks. This... Welcome back, folks. You're listening to What on Earth is Happening here on Oracle Broadcasting. We were looking at occult symbolism in architecture, and we were looking at the Washington Monument as a phallic symbol, and the Capitol Building or Congress Building as the sacred feminine dome, which represents the breast, which is the symbol of fertility and um, the symbol generally of femininity. And we see the reflecting pool being used in conjunction with the Capitol building and with the Washington Monument as well, as we will see in a future slide. Now, the obelisk or phallic symbol in general is a powerful symbol in the occult. Again, this represents the phallus of Osiris in the ancient Egyptian mystery traditions, which basically was the only part of Osiris that was not found by Isis after Osiris was murdered by Set. And Isis was able to reintegrate the other 14 components of Osiris, but not this last one, the 15th part. And again, you have the number 15 connected with the height of the Washington Monument because it is 555 feet above ground. Now, if we look at Image number seven, we will see St. Peter's Square, and yes, it is an oval shape, but they call it a square, in the Vatican. And we see in the middle an Egyptian obelisk, right dead center in the middle of St. Peter's Square, which is the heart of Christianity, modern Christianity, in, um, as, it, as it comes down to us in the modern day through the ancient astro-theological mystery religions, namely the solar cult. So this represents, as we saw before in the section on astro-theology, not only the phallus of Osiris, which was an Egyptian sun god, and the father of Horus, the main sun um, savior figure that the whole entire story of Jesus in the New Testament is based upon. But um, we see there's an eight-sectioned geometry here in the oval of St. Peter's Square. And this is comprised of two crosses, okay? One that looks like a plus up and down, right? And one that is shaped like an X that goes on diagonals. This eight-armed cross is the cross of the zodiac, okay? It is the solstices and equinoxes. That's the cross shaped like a plus sign, okay? Vertical and horizontal bars. This is known as the cross of St. George, and it represents the solar cross, the solstices and the equinoxes. The X represents the cross of St. Andrew, okay? And this represents the galactic cross or the orientation of our solar system with respect to the center of the galaxy. And this cross represents the four fixed signs of the zodiac, which is Aquarius, Taurus, Leo, and Scorpio. And these correspond to earth, air, water, and fire. These correspond to the four angels of the corners, as they are known in uh, Solomonic magic and Goetia and um, other ritual magical systems. 
that they also correspond to the gospel writers, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They correspond to the four cardinal directions, etc., etc., etc. This eight-armed cross, again, connected with astrology, connected with the zodiac, connected with the solar cult of astrotheology, used in conjunction here in the modern-day solar cult, once again, letting you know we are the ones with the light, we represent the sun, the light, okay? We are the um, go-betweens between you and the divine, the intercessors between you and the divine. That's what this institution would claim, okay? This is the spiritual control center of Earth, among other religious institution, institutions, places of... Uh, main places of worship, okay, that basically gather fl the flocks of these mind control agencies flock to, all right? Uh, we saw in the astrotheology section the Kaaba at Mecca being one of these centers representing the center of the galaxy. In this case, we see once again architecture being used to represent concepts that most people are completely unaware of because they are unstudied of the history of these institutions and where their real origin lies. So the phallic symbol, once again used in the Vatican, in, in slide number eight, if we move to slide number eight, we will see three control centers of the earth. And very prominently displayed in these three control centers. As a matter of fact, basically in the very center of them all, we see an Egyptian obelisk representing the male dominator solar power being raised above everything else, being put in a central position, in the most prominent position. Vatican City, a square, independent of the state that surrounds it, Okay, a sovereign state inside of another sovereign state. Okay, of Rome, the city inside the sovereign state of Italy, but the Vatic Vatican City is basically its own sovereign state within uh, Rome, and this is the spiritual control center of the world. Ultimately, the occultists that are really running the show are running it out of the Vatican. Okay, this is really the highest level of control. If you want to know where the darkest occultists of the world are at, the Vatican is a good place to start looking. In addition, we see Washington, D.C. and the reflecting pool, once again, conveying that concept of as above, so below. We will bring the male energy, you, the misuse of the male energy, down to the earth and use it here as a form of control. All right, Washington, D.C., no better example of that because this is the military control center. And again, it's a square. It's a district in between two states, actually, in between Maryland and Virginia. And these are also concepts related to the goddess, Mary and Virgin. And the male dominator control center is placed right in between these two concepts, the state's named after the goddess, okay? And that's an act of rape, symbolically. Okay, you're, you're putting the, the most male power, the military power of the earth, in between the places named after the sacred feminine. This is not accidental. This is deliberately planned, very painstakingly planned, Okay? The city of London. This is the financial control district. Again, another district within a city. Okay? This is where the Bank of London operates. All of the financial machinations that take place are ultimately coordinated from here. So this is monetary control, control of energy. We have military control in Washington, D.C. Basically, the total misuse of male dominator power waging wars of aggression on other sovereign nations throughout the globe. And finally, the spiritual control center run from the Vatican. We see here the obelisks as a, as a central architectural motif 
in all three of these places. All three of them are squares as well, laid out in a square. Okay? Now, I'm from Philadelphia, and the very heart of the city, we see a phallic symbol. In image number nine, this is City Hall in Philadelphia, and it's a huge phallic symbol placed right in the middle of Center City, Philadelphia. If we look at it from overhead, which image number 10 is a shot of, this is from right from Google Earth, and if anybody wants to go into the middle of, of City Hall, just walk straight through it. If you're walking straight uh, along Broad Street, you'll come to the entrances of City Hall, and you can walk right through it to the other side. Right in the middle of the courtyard at City Hall is a gigantic zodiac. Okay, That's what that circular image with the rays of light coming off of it at the middle. I know it's a little bit difficult to see here in this image, but I have stood right in the middle of that zodiac myself, and you would ask yourself, why are, why are they so into zodiacal symbolism? Because ultimately the people that control everything that's going on in the world are occultists. They study the occult. They use the occult to their benefit. They use this hidden knowledge to their benefit and wield it as a weapon against people who have no idea what this knowledge is all about. In image number 11, let's start looking at the example of the pentagram, okay, which we looked at what that represented in previous sections. But here we see the, the inverted pentagram of Satanism. This is the emblem that the Church of Satan employs. We'll leave it right there until we come back after the break. We'll get into what the pentagram ultimately represents, the inverted pentagram, and how this is used, particularly in Washington, D.C. Stay with us, folks. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to What on Earth is Happening on the Oracle Broadcasting Network. Welcome back, everyone. You're listening to What on Earth is Happening. I'm your host, Mark Passio. My website, whatonearthishappening.com. 